Hi everybody, my name is Danica Joan and welcome to Custody Matters Live. We have two wonderful, beautiful women on our show today. I have, of course, the um, Wendy Perry, our regular co-host, and I have Sarvi Emo. She is the most, this is the first time I've ever met her and I've heard of her uh, for years. She is the founder, the founder, of Parental Alienation Awareness Day. Thank you so much, you ladies, for joining me. This is awesome. Thank you for having us here. It's good I, to be here. This is exciting to me because this is this is the week of um, that we honor Parental Alienation Awareness Day, and I want to, you to share with me a little bit about what was the thought process and how you created it, and and what was the the city that it that it first came into existence and now how did it become such a globally recognized event? Okay, um, <laughs> where to begin? So in 2004, I became aware of what parental alienation was because of what my boyfriend at that time uh, that I was dating was going through with his children. And I thought I would um, write an article in a paper that I knew his ex would read to try and educate her how harmful this was to her own kids. Because I always believed, even in the beginning, that education and awareness would help people curb their behavior to an extent. Um, there's always those that are an exception. But anyway, um, the paper refused to write to publish my article. So I got angry and uh, I guess I'm a little feisty. So I said, well, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to get the whole world to tell her. And so back then I was a, a digital marketer. I still am. So my, my profession is marketing and online businesses. And so I went online and I started going on what was then Yahoo groups. I think they still exist. And just telling people this was my idea. Um, everybody was doing things splintered here and there. And I said, let's put it all together on one day because then it becomes like a, a pin, uh, a laser focused day where the media would maybe take notice of what was happening and, uh, and cover it more. So uh, we decided on the original, the original date was March 28th and thank goodness that they didn't stick because it would be freezing, especially in Canada. <laughs> it's cold enough as it is. Um, and March 28th, because it was my uh, then boyfriend's, now husband's birthday. Um, and it changed to April 25th because Dr. Warshak uh, in 2005 on April 25th was here in Toronto. And we thought we would match up the awareness day with uh, the day he was here because obviously I'm from Toronto, Canada, and uh, we wanted to promote it here more than but the focus was in Toronto at that time. But what happened was when we went online, um, everybody was so gung-ho to participate. We had people uh, all over the United States wanting to participate and do this. Um, a lady in Georgia, I believe, I forget her name, Hazel Davis, was the first lady that went and got a proclamation from her governor it was her idea to do this for Parental Alienation Awareness Day. And that opened up the floodgates for everybody to try and go get a, a proclamation from their governors from then on. Um, so even in the first year, it, it got pretty big. I had the support of Dr. Warshak, Dr. Darnell, uh, all, all the major names. I can't think of them right now, but uh, everybody was kind enough to come online and do a web chat for free for everybody. We had a, a free a uh, 24 hour long web chat on that first Parental Alienation Awareness Day where we help parents with what to do. Um, and we even had some uh, par parents that were against parental alienation syndrome come on and, and tell us to stop. And we even managed to convince one of them that uh, to change their point of view, which was really uh, amazing to me. So from there on, we just, uh, uh, actually, we organized the Parental Alienation Awareness Organization got created that year with uh, a lady by the name of Robin Dennison, which was uh, instrumental in partnering with me and Harvey uh, Shapiro in creating the, the organization and giving, giving it legitimacy. 
And, uh, and from there, it just grew and exploded um, all over the world with um, entire countries even proclaiming the day as uh, Parental Alienation Awareness Day. So it's been an amazing idea? journey. Did you, have, did you have any idea that it was going to, to just expand so much? I mean, it, it's, a, it's a global event. No, I, I obviously I just uh, I just naively I guess went online and and started trying to promote it and it just exploded uh, exponentially from there. So no, I had no plans of it going global, but um, sadly, it's everyone all over the world that experienced this, and so that's what happened. Well, you know that's um, it's pretty amazing. Um, to oh my god i'm so moved. thank you thank you thank, thank you yes so thank v, you. I'm, I'm curious about um i think it's such a interesting part to the story that you submitted this article and uh they declined to publish it and what reason did they give for not wanting to publish that and and since then you know there have been quite a few publications about parental alienation awareness and so ha have you that publication did they ever end up publishing anything about it or what happened with that because i think that that's really an interesting part of the history <laughs> um <laughs> well to be honest if i was them i wouldn't publish it either it was really badly written <laughs> 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 it had one goal in mind and one goal only, and that was for her to read it, the ex. Um, and so, it, and therefore, it wasn't a good article. Um, it wasn't. Uh, it, it was written in. Uh, um, it was written as an article, but it had it had a goal in mind. And so, um, I think as far as a magazine goes or a newspaper, I can't remember even who it was or what what it was. Um, I wouldn't have published it either, mm. but but it uh, but it made me angry enough to, you know, decide to take it further, and this is where we are and why we're here all together today. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you said that that I know that we've if you're in this movement long enough, you realize there is a lot of uh, toxicness, and it's not just with um, the people who are the alienators. A lot of times the people are just so angry and so hurt and so frustrated that it gets really negative. So you created something to kind of like shift that. What was that? Yes. Yeah, so in, I think it was, I'm really bad with dates and numbers as Wendy knows, as I tell her, no, it's the ninth. <laughs> no, it's the 15th. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I think it was around 2010 when we added the bubbles of love day to Parental Alienation Awareness Day. And there was uh, several reasons for that. One of the reasons was as we started growing from 2005 to 2010 with more and more people asking their governors for proclamations, we got more and more um, pushback from people that were against the syndrome, which we were always very careful not to call it a syndrome. Um, but still, they would go and approach the governors first before us or even just after we had been there uh, and try and get that proclamation retracted. Uh, and a few governors did, did actually do that. So um, so that was one problem was we were, we were getting less and less governors proclaiming the day as the, as the time went on. Um, and also we were uh, uh, getting um, not as many of the general public participating in Awareness Day. So it was mostly um, concentrated to people who were affected by it and already knew what it was. And therefore, they don't need awareness. They already know what, what it was. So um, I came up with uh, Bubbles of Love Day um, because I was thinking of something that would be cheap uh, for everyone to do and available all over the world. And um, at first, it, it, we were going to do something with tulips but then I thought soap bubbles everybody knows what soap bubbles are and everybody around the world has that so we uh, launched that with a mascot um, uh, the panda which I worked with a lady in Australia uh, who had the panda cartoon already created 
um, PANDA Buzz. PANDA stands for Parental Alienation Needs Direct Action. And we had a whole series of cartoons where the panda would get passed from one alienated child to another to try and comfort them during this process that they were going through um, this abuse. So anyway, the, the reason uh, Bubbles of Love Day was created was um, A, to combat the people that were going to the governors and saying, please don't give Parental Alienation Awareness Day a proclamation. Because when we changed it to Bubbles of Love Day, and they would go and say, please don't give Bubbles of Love Day a proclamation, they seriously sounded like an idiot to be, to be blunt. <laughs> because who doesn't want to spread love? <laughs> So uh, that was one reason. Um, and the other reason was um, because we wanted the general public to join in uh, and bring other people in and involve kids and make it a happy, happier occasion for a sad topic than um, being so depressing. Uh, because what happens, I feel, is that if you're not going through it, um, which most of the general public is not, who knows what the percentage is, um, they don't want to hang around people that are depressing or angry or sad. Um, they want something uplifting. So, so the bubbles and the mascot gave it an uplifting um, spin to it. Um, and so we, you know, got media, more media attention because of it. We got a lot more kids participating, a lot more um, schools. Wendy, Wendy did a great mm -hmm. job getting schools <laughs> to participate. Um, we have a gentleman in Alabama um, who gets like entire baseball fields to participate before a baseball game. Um, uh, Kenneth, mm -hmm. Ashal. So I, I think that, um, I think that this is one of the genius things about bubbles of love ceremonies being part of parental alienation awareness day. We want to raise awareness. That's what it's all about. It's an awareness day to create more awareness. And the more people you attract, the more awareness you're going to raise. And when you include the bubbles of love in your parental alienation awareness day observance, it's, it's family friendly. You know, everybody loves to blow bubbles. It's just, it's fun. You know, kids love to blow bubbles and the grandparents love to blow bubbles. Yeah. And, and, to your point, Sarvi, here in Dallas, Texas, I always try to make our Parental Alienation Awareness Day event um, family friendly for everyone to feel welcome to come and participate. It's not a protest, it's an awareness event. And so yes. you, want, you want to make it um, a, a friendly setting where families can come and bring their kids and blow bubbles. And um, we usually do try to get, um, panda a buzz to make an appearance <laughs> um, but we also have we have face painting and we have balloon animals and just yes you know all kinds of things and 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 then we have more people come and, and like you said we have had literally had bus loads of school school kids come because they just think it's a fun it's a fun day you know it's a fun thing to do here um, every year in our area but you know they bring their parents and their grandparents and the teachers come and then of course while the kids are blowing bubbles and they're having a great time doing face painting. We're giving brochures and giving information exactly. to all of the, uh, all of the adults that are there. And yes. so it, it's really just, I always encourage everyone, no matter um, where you have your event or no matter, um, you know, how big or, or small you think it might be, just make it family friendly so that, you know, families do feel welcome and, and anybody would feel comfortable to come to your event. Yeah. Exactly. And that, and that's a good point, Wendy, in, uh, you know, whether your, your event is just two people or 200 people or more, uh, every single event matters because, again, when we do something all together as a group, um, it attracts media attention. And that's what we're trying to do with the Bubbles of Love and the Parental Alienation Awareness Day. So the goal is not just to um, uh, uh, create awareness in your local area in your in your group that you can um, influence but also globally with everybody so everybody laser focused on that day doing the same thing whether it's two of you um, or two thousand of you it makes a difference because um, every every person counts so mm -hmm. yeah you know 
it's an opportunity I, I see is, um, I know what I've done is I've been able to, with use, getting proclamations, it gives you legitimacy as far as what your cause is and it's endorsed by the municipality. But then it, that's an, a door opener to be exactly. on a radio station, and then you've expanded it to that level. Or being um, having a booth at a children's festival. I know in the spring, a lot of times they have these different festivals and things like that. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to coordinate a big, um, you know, thing with a podium and have speakers and have yes. it so formal. It can just be fun. It just exactly. It's been. I, that's what's so wonderful about it and uh and 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 people receive positivity a lot of times when yes. um, you know it's like so like you know these cancer runs and stuff like that there's they um when you're trying to promote something a serious cause the worst thing you can do is to keep it serious you know yes make it fun make it fun and inviting so yes that's that's yeah. my motto too always give it the positive spin because then more people will listen. We've had, um, we try to have an aware, Parental Alienation Awareness Day event here every year. And they've, they've really varied as far as the size and um, the activities that we have. Um, some of them have been really big, like a couple hundred people. Um, but then we've had small gatherings where it was very informal and we said, hey, we're just going to meet at this park and blow bubbles and just hang out. And those were some of our very best events. The people said that they just love, they just loved that just to get together and blow bubbles and hang out. So, yeah. it, you know, it's okay to, um, you know, have it, uh, you know, at the end of your driveway and invite all of your neighbors socially distanced this year of course yes. you know but you know it it, it 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 doesn't matter how big or how small it is just you know do something and even if it's just you know your immediately your immediate family at your house this year you know um take pictures of that and put it online and, and share it on um you know there's a, a bubbles of love facebook page you know share it there to let people know that you know, we're all in this together around the world. And I think that that's something that's really awesome about this Awareness Day is that it is all around the globe. People all around the world on April 25th are going to blow those bubbles of love. Yes. It's, yeah. it's uh, still amazing to me. It makes, makes me emotional when I see it. All the pictures coming from uh, all over the world. I make a video montage every year um, to put it all together and try and squeeze in everybody's pictures as many as I can um and I think I cry a video when I, I do <laughs> I cry I cry every year that video is so powerful um because um Sarvi you do put in pictures of people blowing bubbles all around the world and you put the which countries the pictures are from and yeah it's you can't watch it without crying it's it's so powerful and it's so important because I think that people do need to know that you know this is not just one family who um they don't get along that's not what parental alienation is and it does affect families all around the world yes it does yes it does yeah, I try sure. to partner it because, you know, April is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month and there's, it's very much hand in hand. Um, we, I have not been able to get a lot of um, connection with our local um, organization who, who sponsors it and they actually do pinwheels. And it's for the same reason, you know, pinwheels are, are a symbol of childhood innocence, just like bubbles and stuff like that. And I've tried to, we always run into each other when we're receiving, receiving proclamations. And, um, but uh, to get um, people to see the connection of the domestic violence um, that the family endures because of the alienation uh, is, a, is, a, is a longer conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wanna say on that note, Danica, that to me, parental alienation is child abuse. It's child abuse whether you're seeing your kids or not seeing your kids. I know a lot of people, a lot of parents don't see their kids and that's a side effect of what happens during the whole uh, alienation spectrum. But um, even if you are seeing your kids, if parental alienation is happening, that's, that's child abuse to me. Yeah. And it needs to be 
stopped or the other parent made aware um, of how they're damaging their own children for a lifetime, really. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, so what is the point of Parental Alienation Awareness Day? What's the point of um, proclamations? Like, who cares? What does it do? It doesn't solve anything. Uh, and I disagree because I think with education and awareness, um, people change. People change their behavior. Just like, you know, 30, 40 years ago, you, you smoked while you were pregnant or you drank a lot while you were pregnant or you didn't wear your seatbelt. But now with education and awareness, most people do those things because they know how it can kill you or hurt your fetus. Um, I think the same is true with awareness and education about parental alienation. And I've seen a lot of parents um, during the years that I've been doing this actually change their behavior once they realize how damaging it was for their kids. You know, something I want to correct, I, I mentioned domestic violence, but it's actually Child Abuse Prevention Month is April, yes. which is the part that goes hand in hand. And it's interesting, one of my instructors for my co-parenting, my uh, family stabilization course that I wrote, she was an alienator. And she got so um, just present to the impact it had on her children that now she makes it her mission to, to teach parents not to do that. And she incorporates it into uh, her presentation. So that's amazing. I want yeah. to, um, I guess, affirm and confirm what Sarvi was saying about that awareness and education leads to change. Um, one thing that I do is I um, host support group meetings. And when I started hosting support group meetings about 10 years ago, most of the parents who came to the support group meetings, they had been alienated for many, many years. Um, and the awareness has really been quite effective. And now we have quite a few parents who come to our support group meetings who say, I'm not alienated yet, but I've heard of this. And I'm seeing the signs of it and I want to be proactive and prevent it from setting in. So, you know, Sarvi, what you started has, it's just really made such an impact and such a difference and it really has led to change. And I think we've gone from awareness to education to now we're really seeing families that are, are aware because of what you started and they are working on prevention, which is so incredible, you know, that these families, because of the awareness, because of what you started, they, they are in prevention mode so that they don't end up in full-blown parental alienation. And it's just really, really, it, it's very, very important. That's and amazing. Like, Dan, like Danica said, we're very, very grateful to you for your vision to, to make that happen. Thank you so much, Wendy. And that's really amazing to hear. And that's, that's what this was all about. It was about teaching parents and their support network, the people that support them in these behaviors, that this is wrong and it's hurting their kids, their grandkids, um, and our future, future generations. So, Yes. And we're gonna tr we are going to create for the Guardians and Gatekeepers virtual conference that we're having, having this coming weekend, actually launching it April the 24th. We, are, we have a series of experts that are doing their presentations all throughout the 24th. The 25th is going to be a live panel discussion so that people can actually participate. They can jump on our Zoom link and get their questions answered um amazing panel and maybe we can have a conversation and you might be able to be <laughs> one of the and, um, and then we finish it up with a whole screen zoom screen of a hundred faces blowing bubbles wouldn't that be amazing oh my god that would be amazing for sure yes yes yeah all right so it and so we should we should say because i don't know that we really said the number um that this year, April 25th, will be the 15th annual International Parental Alienation Awareness Day. Awesome. 15 You're years, correct. Harvey. Yes. <laughs> awesome. 15 years, I count, yes. I count it every year. I really yes. do have to look at the calendar and count it every year, but this will be the 15th year. 15 of years is amazing. Come along. Feels like yes. But yeah, we, we certainly have 
come a long way all together. Every single person that helps uh, do this helps promote, uh, helps, helps the whole movement move forward, even if it's by a tiny step at a time. And, and, and what I've seen uh, today as far, uh, and what I saw 15 years ago is a big difference. There's so much advancement in, in a lot of places and a lot of uh, things, changes happening For sure. all around the world. Like, you know, Wendy, she educates school systems and, and I, I see that as so, so important because I know it would have made a difference if um, the administrators and the school personnel had really gotten uh, what was going on. Um, it would have made a difference. And now yeah. we have people like Wendy who go to the schools and say, this is how you, this is, this is what to look for and this is how you can be the neutral party that um, that does not is not part of the problem and like an like an and becoming an accomplice and not meaning to come to become an accomplice of an alienator. Um, so uh, it's people like Wendy that have uh, that yeah. she does and oh my gosh I could mention a, I don't even want to mention any more people because I. Don't <laughs> Oh, so the, many way, people. the way I start, the way I started, the very first thing I did was I had a parental alienation awareness day event. That was the way I started because I came out of a very contentious um, family court case involving parental alienation and I wanted to make a difference and I wanted to do something positive and I, and I saw parental alienation awareness day as an opportunity to raise awareness but in a positive way so that's how I started um, it was in 2011 I had uh, hosted my first parental alienation awareness day event and uh, there's a picture of it right back there behind me uh, Dr. Warshak and uh, Panda Abuzz at our very first parental <laughs> alienation awareness day event here in Dallas and it's just a it's a really really important day and I hope that everyone who watches this interview even if you are not personally dealing with or affected by parental alienation, I hope that on April 25th, you will get a bottle of bubbles and blow bubbles of love with us. Think, of, think about your own family. And, and I, I, my little quote is, parental alienation can happen to anyone, so it should matter to everyone. And so mm -hmm. even if you're not a, directly affected by parental alienation, I hope on April 25th, you'll join us and, and blow some bubbles of love. That's right. Yes. Thanks, and um, all right. Well, that's all we have for um, this week's uh, episode of uh, Custody Matters Live <laughs> and um, honoring Parental Alienation Awareness Week. So thank you so much for joining us. And thank I you so much for having me on here, Danica and Wendy. Thank right. you, Sarvi. Sarvi, thank you for all that you you do. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks for your support. Okay. I'll see you again next week on Custody Matters Live.